Okay, so now we're going to talk about karyotypes. And karyotypes is just going to be what chromosomes you possess personally, right? So um, if we look at our PowerPoint here, this is a karyotype, okay? So you can see they're numbered 1 through 22, and then you have this here, which are your sex chromosomes, okay? So now it's a lot easier to see that for every chromosome, you have two copies, one from your mom and one from your dad, one from your mom, one from your dad, and so on. The um, sex chromosomes here, the way those work is you're either XX or XY. And the way that that works is, if we are going to go back to this whole idea about the sperm and the egg, let me just clear this picture. Um, every egg, okay, so this is an egg, is going to be X. The sperm can either be X or Y. So it just depends which one gets there. If it's XX, when they get there, that's going to be female. And if it's XY, that's going to be male. Okay, so that's how sex determination is going to happen. Okay, let's get back to your notes though and talk about haploid and diploid number, okay? Haploid is going to be in us 23 chromosomes, so one set of chromosomes. Diploid number is going to be 46 chromosomes for us, which is twice the number of chromosomes. So you could say an egg and a sperm have a haploid number, but when they come together and form a zygote, that's the diploid number, right? So you have two haploid gametes coming together to form a diploid zygote. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay. Um, let's talk about parts of chromosomes, too. So you have um, centromeres and telomeres, okay? And just like centromere sounds, it's in the center, okay? So um, if I get to my PowerPoint, I think I've got a picture here. Yeah, so the centromere is going to be this kind of, like, it looks like the little cinched-in waist, right? That's going to be the center of your chromosome. And then the telomeres are going to be at the tips of the chromosomes. And as you age, the telomeres get shorter and shorter. Okay, so that's going to be how that works. All right, then we have chromatids. So what's going to happen is you're going to have, and I think that picture was actually showing it pretty well. Okay, so this is going to be like, let's say your mom's version of chromosome number one. What's going to happen is DNA is going to copy itself, right? When it copies itself, now chromosome number one has an exact copy of itself. These are now called sister chromatids, okay? You could also have chromosome number one from your father, like over here, and then that's going to make a copy, and those two are going to be called sister chromatids, okay? So sister chromatids are going to be held together by this little disc of protein called the centromere, okay? So that's how you can kind of talk about these different parts. Alrighty, that's going to be important when we start talking about how these things are going to move around. So the cell cycle, if this is going to be like the life of a cell, is going to be composed of five stages. And I think it also helps to see a picture for this one. So you've got, here's where the cell splits. So now you've got your new cell. G1, which is going to just be growth. So the cell's getting its nutrition, it's getting a little bit bigger, you know, it's developing its organelles. Then it's going to go through the S phase, and S stands for synthesis of DNA, which is where it's going to copy the DNA. After that, it's going to go to G2, which is another growth phase, where it can copy organelles and things like that. Then it's going to go to the M phase, which is mitosis, and then the C phase, which is cytokinesis, which is where the cell actually splits. So it's going to go G1, S, G2, M, C. That's the, going to be the um, cell cycle that it goes through. Okay. Now, there are lots of places where things can go wrong. So we'll get into later, there's going to actually be checkpoints where it's going to check that everything went correctly. And if not, it'll send it back to go and go correctly. And if that cell cycle gets messed up, that's when you can have things like cancer happen. So we'll talk about that a little bit later. All right, so here's your cell cycle. I've listed everything that's going to be happening there. Now, as far as how long the cell cycle lasts, um, it depends. You could have a couple of minutes to forever. Um, you've got some cells that don't like to regenerate, like nerve cells and brain cells. Well, brain cells they're doing new studies on, but nerve cells. And so what they're finding is 
those don't like to regenerate. So they just kind of pause after G1 and they go into like a resting state that's called G0 and it just kind of stays there. So um, all sorts of different ways that things can work. So in the next videos, we're going to start getting into the actual phases of mitosis and how they actually are going to work.